Hi everyone, welcome back to Mommy Must Haves, a show created to save you new parents money, time, and energy on the products you need most. Today we're tackling swaddling blankets. With so many swaddling blankets, it can be overwhelming. That's why I'm delighted to welcome the renowned creator of the Happiest Baby on the Block DVD and book, the incredible Dr. Harvey Karp with us to share some tips on swaddling. Thank you so much for being here, Dr. Karp. Oh, I'm really happy to be with you, Rachel. So starting out, why is swaddling a newborn baby so important? You know, swaddling's been used like forever for new parents, and the reason is because it works so well. If you want your baby to sleep longer, if you want your baby to cry less, and if you want to be able to keep your baby in that safe position on the back, swaddling is the real key. So swaddling is just, it's so instrumental, and is that why it's one of your five S's? It is, it's really the base of it. Actually, if you're not doing the swaddling, nothing else works well. And even if you are doing swaddling, at least for sleep, it's important to add on kind of a rumbly white noise as well. A lot of people think, well, my baby sleeps fine swaddled, so I don't need white noise. But in fact, the white noise helps them sleep even better. And then when you wean the swaddling, which is usually four to six months of age, the white noise continues. So it's like a teddy bear of sound. It helps them continue sleeping even through teething and growth spurts and all those other things that can kind of mess up their sleep the rest of the first year. I like that teddy bear of sound. I know I personally had a lot of problems getting out of the swaddle. And for the next baby, we're gonna be using that white noise. Great. So another thing I've heard you mention, is it true that swaddling can help moms lose weight? This was one of the things that really surprised me, even though I'm a pediatrician, because I knew that swaddling would help babies sleep longer and help them cry less. But I didn't realize how like incredibly important that is for health later on. Because when your baby, when you're exhausted and your baby's crying and you feel incompetent, that leads to, you know, screaming at your spouse. <laughs> It leads to postpartum depression, and it leads to breastfeeding failure, and unsafe sleep practices, and child abuse even, and losing weight. Because it turns out if you're exhausted, you're, you know, you're impulsive. You're eating at 11 o'clock at night when you shouldn't be. You're not exercising. And so we see that through swaddling and getting more sleep, moms are actually able to get back to their birth, you know, pre-birth weight uh, faster. Wow, that's incredible. I wish that I could still swaddle my baby, if that could still help out. <laughs> So do you have any other pointers for swaddling? Yes, I have a gigantic pointer, which is don't worry if your baby resists the swaddling at first. So many people start swaddling babies and they go, oh, my baby doesn't like the swaddling. Well, your baby doesn't know what your baby likes. Because honestly, this is how much room they have in the womb. They've got like just an inch of extra motion. So they don't need the big world. The world is too big for them. They need security. And so when you wrap your baby, even if they struggle against it, Get the arms down straight and snug. Let the hips be bent because you want the hips to have room um, so there's no pressure on the hips. But then when you add the other, five, the other four of the five S's, your baby will relax into calm. And then the swaddling will help your baby stay calm and stay asleep longer. So don't lose confidence if the baby resists the, resists the swaddling at first. And I think that's so helpful because so many parents say, you know, my child just doesn't like to be swaddled and oftentimes they're just not giving enough time or they might not be doing it correctly. Right, or they're not adding on that white noise like I was saying, which is like the critical step. It's as important as swaddling for helping calming crying babies and getting them to sleep an extra hour or two. And I've heard you mention another thing, as the child is ready to give up the swaddle, the white noise is really instrumental because it helps them transition, is that correct? That's totally right also. Because imagine this, you know, if you wean the baby off of swaddling at four or five months or six months, something like that, that's just when they're getting nosy and interested in the world. So when they wake up in the middle of the night, if there's no white noise, if it's totally quiet and now they're not swaddled, then they start to wake up and say, hey, you know, where's my mom? Hey, people, come on, let's play. If they have the white noise playing, they wake up and they hear that familiar sound, that rain on the roof sound, and they just naturally kind of lean back into sleep rather than waking up all the way. So it can be a, just a lifesaver in terms of avoiding sleep problems in the second half of the first year. That's so helpful. And in terms of swaddling blankets, what do you recommend in terms of size, shape, material? Actually, when I started doing this work, they only had these little rectangular blankets available, which you couldn't even get all the way around the baby. And now we've got great blankets like this uh, Marquisette blanket, which is super big. Look how large this is. So you can imagine, you can use this for a little baby, but you'll be able to use this until the baby gets to four or five months of age, so you don't have to buy extra blankets as they get bigger. 
Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Harp, today. It's been wonderful having you. Thank you very much, Rachel. It's been a lot of fun. Wow. Awesome. <laughs> and really, we only scratch the surface of what Dr. Carp covers in his Happiest Baby on the Block DVD. Be sure to check it out along with his Soothing Sounds DVD of specially engineered noises just to help your baby sleep better. Now that we've gotten great advice about swaddling, it's time for my recommendations on swaddling blankets. If you have a small budget, check out the Summer Infant Swaddling Blanket. They come in really cute prints and they're really great. If you have a medium budget, check out Swaddle Designs. One of my favorite things about Swaddle Designs is that it has an easy 3-2-1 swaddle, so you can never forget how to swaddle, even if it's 3 in the morning and you haven't slept in days. They come in two different fabrics. The ultimate receiving blanket is a flannel material and it's great for newer babies or for winter time. And they also have a Marquisette swaddling blanket, which is great for older babies or for hotter climates. Their fabrics are very luxurious and I absolutely love them. And if you have a large budget, check out Aiden and Anae. They're very, very luxurious fabrics. They come in very cute prints and they're extremely popular today for parents. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you on the next episode of Mommy Must Haves.